Morning, everyone. Morning. Give us a wave this morning. I was reminded again how when the folks at the care center watch, they love to see you wave at them. Go ahead, give them a wave. Give them a wave. Just a minute. Ready? You look pretty good. Wave. Wave, Eddie. Check your neighbor and tell them it's the third Sunday of the new year. See if they look okay. Tell your neighbor it's the third Sunday of the new year. See if they look okay. Check them and check them. Here's the caller. Marvin, I'll sit by you today. You're just fine right there. Yep. Wonderful. Can you believe January's half over? It's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, we have a couple of uh, announcements. I got a card from Samaritan's Purse. Um, they said the Southeast Wyoming area packed 8,299 shoeboxes in 2020. And we helped do that. So just Southeast Wyoming, 8,299. And I think March told me she followed them. Uh, some, um, at least a couple of them she knew went to South Africa this year. So that's where they, those ended up. Quite a deal, isn't it? They can transport, transport, transport. Um, other announcement, uh, the Valley Christian School is not having their usual fundraiser. They are having an online one. So did you see that? So this is the raffle. You can go to Valley Christian School. It's under charity auction bid, this blue one here. So drawing will be Monday, February 15th. So again, you go on there, and I guess I haven't been there yet, um, but you can bid on items online, and then if you win, they'll get them to you. So I'm not sure how all that transpires, but oh, don't look at that. <laughs> all right, see it? So Valley Christian School, they'll still have a bunch of items on there like they always do, but the main, like they have a raffle for the mower, and uh, shopping spree, they put right on their main flyer, but you can keep in mind if you go to the website. So we'll email that out to you so you get that this week. And uh, it's, been, it's on Facebook already if you follow Valley Christian School. So the auction is going, and you can be a part of that uh, this year. Okay? So we want to let you know that. All right, any other announcements this morning? I don't think of any. All right, how about birthdays? Birthdays, birthdays. Marisol, Anna does. Oh, mom does. Oh, Eva, Eva. Marisol, how many is she? Thirty. Uh huh. All right, we'll leave that alone. We'll leave that alone. Congratulations, happy birthday. Carol, Mike has a birthday today. Everybody look at Mike. Mike, happy birthday. Mike wears it well, doesn't he? He does wear it well. Mike, I'm going to tell everybody, okay? Or do you want to say it? You better say it. Can you hear me? 59. Look at that guy. So he's got about one more good year left in him if he needs something done. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mike. Anybody else? All right, we're going to sing. Happy birthday to Eva and to Mike. Eva, are you close to Mike's age? <laughs> Way over the hill, she says, Mike. Way over the hill. Happy birthday to you. see how many years you've been together. Go ahead, talk it over with your honey. See if you can remember how many years you've been there. Yeah. Thanks for coming to church this morning. 34 this year. Good save. Good save. Good save. Well, we're glad you came. Glad you came to church. 
Remember, we always want to remember, it's all about heaven. And uh, how do we help people go to heaven? How do we help people go to heaven? So I want to start with this today. You're going to see a reoccurring theme once again. So I want you to talk to your neighbor about two things you remember from this past week. Two things. Talk to your neighbor. Two things you remember from this past week. Okay, go, go, go. Two things you remember from this past week. Some of you are just talking to fill the space because you can't remember. How many can't remember two things from the past week? Anybody? You got it? You got it? How many did remember two things? Raise your hand if you remember two things. All right. I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see that. you remember one thing twice? No, it doesn't count. Andy. But in some cases, you remember it once, and then you forgot that you remembered it, and you remember it again. So maybe it does count as two. Let's check it. All right, take your hymn note. We're going to go to this song this morning. Faith is a victory. And stand with me and sing 308, please. 308. Faith is the victory. Pictures, right? 
So this week we're doing strange animal adaptations. So you have to tell your, your neighbor what animal this is, what kind of animal, not the name, but what kind of animal. Now come nobody said, oh. Like last week, they were all going ooh and ah over everything. So what is it? Huh? It, has a, it is an amphibian. It has external gills. I see light and dark. There's in mucky, wet places. A salamander. So what's this one? A baby one. <laughs> You should make a movie out of this, shouldn't you? It's a character for a Disney movie right there. Baby one. Would you like one of those? Oh. Here's one we have in our neighborhood. What's that? Oh. They love you. They love you. All right. What are five things you remember from Thanksgiving and Christmas season of 2020? Five things. Tell your neighbor. Go, go. Five things you remember from Thanksgiving and Christmas last year. Okay. Yeah. All right, raise your hand if your neighbor remembered five things. Raise your hand if your neighbor remembered five things. Did your neighbor remember five things? Raise your hand if your neighbor did not remember five things. <laughs> All right, well, look at him and say, nobody loves you like Jesus. Tell your neighbor, nobody loves you like Jesus. Go ahead and tell him. We're going to sing this song. Now. Nobody loves you like Jesus.
month ago, five years ago, ten years ago, or when you were a child? Which ones do you remember the best? Talk it over with your neighbor. As you went through those different stages, which memories stick the longest with you? Which ones do you hold on to? A little quiz. Can you remember any of the animals I showed you 15 minutes ago? Yes. Talk it over with your neighbor and tell me how many pictures I showed you. How many did I show you? How many? Huh? They were real. All of them. I know. That's what's amazing. All right, how many did I show you? Six. Six? No. You're close. No. We got Carter. No. There was five in the last set. And how many in the first set? Seven. No. Three. No. So there was three in the first set, five in the second set. You said eight? There you go. So do you remember some of them? It's strange how we forget things quickly, isn't it? It's hard to remember. Hey, stand up with me. Stand up with me if you would. I'm going to say this in here. Do your statements. Do your statements. I'm ready to be Jesus. Amen? Amen. I've lived to help my family be ready to be Jesus. Amen? Amen. I've lived to help others be ready to be Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen? Amen. He forgave my sins. Amen? Amen? Amen. He saved me from eternal separation from God. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. And He gives me everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Yes, He does. We're going to pray. Where's the boys and girls? Where's the boys and girls? Pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is kingdom and the power. Sing the dark songs of the
Thank you for always faithful giving, offering boxes at the back of church so you know that. Uh, we're going to take some time to pray. An update on Rachel Schreiner from last Sunday. And uh, she's doing much better. She went back. She was just off some medications and things are good. So Rachel's okay. Also, I hope to get Kay Smith's picture up there soon, but Kay's doing well. And I'll try to get a number out on an email as well. If you want to call somebody up at the care center, you're welcome to do that. It's been tricky. They've been changing numbers, and we've had trouble getting a hold of people for some time. But they're able to now, and then they have portable phones. So if you would want to call and visit with somebody, you don't have to talk long, but uh, they would sure appreciate that. So I'll try to get that out this week for you and uh, let you know. Molly, glad you're back. Thank you, everybody, for all your prayers. Yeah. Funeral went well for your mama? It was very beautiful, yes. Yeah. Molly's mama went to be with Jesus. And we're glad for that. Uh, Carlin, we prayed for her, a 10-year-old young gal. I didn't get an update on her this week, but uh, she was having some troubles breathing, her respiratory system, and uh, not sure what there. So we'll keep praying. Also, this week, you know as well as I do, if you've watched any news, you don't even have to watch the news, but uh, we have lots of events taking place at our nation's capital, and, and um, we really want to be in prayer for that. It's just quite a time, and uh, lots of people that are concerned all over the country. I know I saw one picture where they were posting uh, police departments at the state capitals even. And I thought, so many folks have to be so concerned. And we just really want God to do a miracle and, and uh, take care of things for this week's events and, and pray about that. So, will you bow and pray with me? Father God, thank you for helping Rachel this week. We're glad for that and for being with Molly. And Father, for keeping her and her journeys and for her mother, for little Carla, we pray for her. Father God, as we're thinking about it, it was so good to see Jean and Sandy in church this morning. Thank you for answering prayers as we have already prayed, but God, here they are, and we can touch and see it and hug them and give them love. And so, God, thank you for helping bring Jean back to us here at church and uh, blessing them. Thank you for your answers to prayer. Father, we pray for Eva's, Eva's husband, Frank. We pray for him and test that he's going through and ask God that you will keep your hand with him and uh, with Eva as well. Give him strength. Father, for uh, this great nation that we get a privilege to live in, and all the turmoil and changes. And Father, I would just hope that this week as we, your people, Christians, as we think about these events that we would stop and pray, bow our heads and ask God that your hand of protection would be with our, our people in this country. People that if we sat down with at the restaurant, we would talk and share and have a good time. And yet, Father, there's fear and there's trepidation this week and there's anxieties. And we just pray, Father, that your hand of mercy would be with and would be delivering and would give grace and give wisdom for this week's events in our country. Thank you, Father, for letting us be in this great country, for our homes. Thank you for all we've been given. And as Moses reminds us of that today in Deuteronomy 8, Lord, let it commit it to our hearts that we won't forget. We won't forget. We won't forget you, God, and all that you've done. We love you and we thank you this day. In your precious name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any other prayer requests this morning? Gene and Sandy are right back there if you haven't seen them yet. So on the way out, you can bump them. Oh, yeah. At the end of this week, uh, Garrett and Maggie, our son and daughter-in-law, have been in Florida with her parents for, for Christmas. They're going to go back to Minnesota this Friday. So we thought, uh -huh, what a great time to travel. So we don't know. So if you would keep them in their prayers as well. And we'll pray for them. Father, we lift Garrett and Maggie and the kids to you this week and ask for safe travels and, and highways to be open and everything to be okay. We just trust you for that, God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, let's take our Bibles. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're gonna, I'm going to ask you to read with your neighbor verses 3 through 5. If you read those out loud. Do we need bread to live? We know that answer, kind of. So I'll read that out loud. Verses 3 through 5 of Deuteronomy chapter 8. If you will, please. Go, 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 go. Read that. Read that. Bread, do we need bread? Do we need bread to live? What do we as followers of Jesus live by? What do we live by? If not bread, what? The Word of God. The word of God. Every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we're in uh, Deuteronomy. I like this a lot. Reminder to us today of the purpose of this book. Moses wrote it. Moses wrote this book or had someone scribe it as he gave the story. It's his last words to God's people. At the end of this book, Moses goes and uh, becomes part of heaven's wonderful crowd, wonderful his kingdom. We, that's not the last we hear of him. We hear of him later in the New Testament as well. But Moses' last words are written in this book. So if you will, Deuteronomy is kind of the memoirs of a, of a, a leader before he passes on the torch to Joshua. So I just picked a couple of chapters we'll go through from time to time here as he gives such things. Last week we did chapter 6, and this week we want to look at chapter 8. You see what it says at the beginning of chapter 8 for a heading, for a title? You see that? What does it say? Do not forget the Lord. Do not forget the Lord. So we've been talking about remembering. Do you remember that we started talking about remembering? Randy, do you remember that I told you to remember? You remember, good man, good man. We talked about remembering this week. We talked about remembering the holidays. We talked about remembering summer. We talked about remembering as a kid. We talked about these things just very briefly. Moses is giving them encouragement to think about moving where God wants them to be. They're sitting on the other side of the Jordan River looking across at the land of milk and honey as their forefathers were told about to go and take it. And 40 years earlier, they could have went in and gone to that place that God promised them. But they were afraid. They saw all that the land had to offer. They saw the people who were there, and they were large and strong, and they had great armies. And they, they went through all this in their minds, and they said, we can't go in there. You see, even though God has and holds for us a promise in our future and in our lives, sometimes we're so timid that we may not step into that promise that he has for us. It doesn't mean that the promise necessarily has gone away. It just means our taking a hold of that promise will take another time to process, to learn, to get there. So Deuteronomy chapter 8 has that for us. Chapter 7 is, talks about God's delivering the people from many battles. So if you want to hear stories about that, some of them, the battles were so gruesome in the Old Testament that we could read about, but they're promises that God kept. And he helped the people overcome great armies. When they shouldn't have won, they shouldn't have taken the lands and the plunder of those places. Chapter 8, do not forget all that God has done for us. So I want to go through chapter 8 with you just for a few moments here this morning. Chapter 8, do not forget. Part 1 is our basic needs. Look at verses 1 through 5, 1 through 5 of Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today. Now, I'm not just saying this, right? This is Moses' words. So think about Moses. And one of my favorite movies growing up was which movie? They always showed around Thanksgiving. What was the name of it? Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. And who was the lead character? Charlton Heston. He was a, quite a guy. That movie is what we're talking about. This is the follow-up of that movie. Follow that story of the Ten Commandments. He says, Moses says, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today. 
so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your parents. God promised it. But they didn't get it, he's reminded them. You have a chance to take it. Verse 2, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these, how many years? Forty years. Forty years. To humble you, to test you, in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his command. So in these 40 years, God has brought them back, and they tested well. They're ready to go. Verse 3, he humbled you, causing you hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. God taught them that he will provide their basic needs. Their clothes did not wear out. Look at your neighbor and say, how would you like to wear those same clothes for 40 years? Go ahead, talk to your neighbor. 40 years you get to wear those clothes you have on right now. They're not going to wear out. Now, I remember being a young boy, mom put me in a pair of polyester pants one time. They were scratchy and they were scratchy and hot. Yes, you remember those? But did they ever wear out? I still have them today. You want some clothes that will last, you gotta get polyester. That's scratchy and hot, but it never wears out. It's even stretchy fabric, like today's stretchy jeans. Look, their clothes never wore out in 40 years. That was a reminder to them to remember what God had blessed them with. I like the next one. Your feet did not what? Swell. Anybody have trouble with your feet swelling? Yeah. By the end of a long hot day, wearing your irrigation boots, your feet almost are stuck in them. The kids have to help you pull them off. And then you put them in a cold bucket of water. Who doesn't that feel good? They were walking in the hot desert for 40 years. Their feet did not swell one time. Now isn't it odd that Moses would ask them to recall that? To recall simple little things. I mean there was a pillar of fire and a cloud. There was manna that she talks about. But something that Moses asked them to recall is, don't forget that your feet did not swell up when they should have. Little things sometimes we start to forget about. It fades away how the hand of God watched over us. And look at the next one. Look down at your shoes. You can wear the same shoes for 40 years. <laughs> Clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their feet didn't swell. 40 years their shoes didn't wear out. When I was a boy... And I was 10 years old. I remember my mother complaining because it was about every month and a half she'd have to buy a new pair of shoes. They were pretty cheap shoes back then. But she had to go get a new pair all the time. Number one, I was wearing them out. Number two, my feet were growing, right? Look at verse five. You know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God has disciplined you. And they were ready. That's what Moses is saying to him. God disciplined you and you're ready. You're ready for this moment. Look at verse 6. The second part, this next paragraph talks about from the land. He says, observe the commands of the Lord your God walking in his ways and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and the hills. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack what? Nothing. Nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. 
It's a promise. What lies ahead in your future? What lies ahead in your life? What things do you look forward to? You look forward to digging copper out of the hills. Verse 10. It becomes more personal, and I really like this. All that we have, remember this. I'm going to read it because I want you to hear the words as Moses scribed them for us. He says, when you have eaten and you are satisfied, praise the Lord your God. Sometimes I forget that. I'm eating quickly. I'm busy. And I don't take a moment to really praise God. Because you and I know, and I'm frustrated by some of the things that the, in politics and the government level is consumed by all these things, but we have so many hungry people. And it really gives me strange feelings. When you have eaten and you are satisfied, give praise to God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. See, Moses is saying it again. Do not forget. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decree that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and you settle down, and when your herds and your flocks grow large, and your silver and your gold increase, and all you have is multiplied. See, he's talking to his people. They've been wandering in the desert for 40 years, and he's giving them this hope. But Moses is saying, when you do these things, when all of this happens, and you start to settle into this great promise that God has given you, and so many of us can attest to the same things, that we get to live every day in the blessings that God has given to us. Verse 14. Then your heart will become proud. God forgive me for a proud heart. Right? God forgive me for a proud heart. And you will forget the Lord your God. Who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. Some things we can never forget. We have to remember. Verse 15, he led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of the rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. You see that? We might say that. But then my hands get weaker and older. Don't they? Mr. Hansen, do our hands get weaker and older? They do, don't they? They're very talented. But they do get weaker and older. My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. What a mistake to say that, wouldn't it be? I talked to Steve before church. It's almost calving season, isn't it, Steve? You've taken care of the cows. You fed the cows. You moved the cows. But what did you do to make that calf grow inside of that mama? You gave her feet, didn't you? At any moment when that baby comes out, can you look at it and say, look what I made? You can't say it, can you? And you don't even think of it that way. You don't even think of it that way. Because we didn't do it. We know that God did it. Verse 18, look at what he says. Look what Moses says to the people. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms 
His covenant, which He swore by your forefathers, as it is today. I don't have anything that didn't come through God's hands to get to me. So remember. So what is memory? What is memory? Look at this. Attention. We use our senses to put memory into our mind, right? So we pay attention through either sight, sound, touch, taste, feel, and that's immediate memory. We have something there. We have a working memory which helps us classify our events and take care of our daily concern. And then we have a long-term memory which in some ways will stick with us longer than anything else. But how did it get there? How did those long-term memories say? What are some tricks to help us remember? So what's some tricks you do throughout the week to help you remember things that you're hoping to remember? Do you do this one anymore? Anybody tie a string on your finger? No. Anybody use sticky notes? And you put them someplace where you can't remember where they were? And you find them a month later and say, oh, that's where I put that dumb sticky note. Where do you put sticky notes so you don't forget them? Refrigerator. Where else? Where? The windshield of the truck. Mirrors. What? Calendar. Kitchen counter. Oh, we'll get to the, the phone is how we use so much now, don't we? My phone gives me reminders. Isn't that great? And Big Iron sends me reminders every day that I need to check it. Why? I'm not betting on anything. What are some things I have trouble remembering? Are you ready? Anybody have trouble remembering your passwords? So I shouldn't tell you. I have a secret. And I can't remember them. So I only have three. So every time I sit down on the computer, I try all three until one of them opens it, right? I have one, 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 two, 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 three, three. <laughs> Can't remember. I tried to put it in here. But some other things we have trouble remembering. Hey, if you're moving any time in your life, sometimes you're going to forget stuff, right? How about at weddings? Do you say, oh, do we remember? Do we remember? How many times did you go over the list for a wedding? Oh, my goodness. Bailey went over that list 9,000 times. How many times do you forget something when you're planning a party? Quick, run to the store and what? You forgot it. You got it. How about you go to the grocery store and you've got a list? You forgot the list. So you try to remember what's on the list. How many times do you go back to the grocery store? So I go downstairs to get something, and what did I remember? So I went back upstairs, and I forgot why I came upstairs empty-handed. How about to wash something? Schoolwork. Anybody have trouble remembering schoolwork? I do. Call someone back. So you got them on a message and you're going to call them back. How many of you remember to actually call them back? Until two weeks later you say, oh, I'm just going to call you back. How about drop off something? I went there, I drove there, and I was going to drop something off and I can't remember what it was. How about if you, how many of you remember to put gas in the car? So every time I drive my honey's car, I have to do what? Put gas in the car. Oh, Eric, you do that, huh? Uh, when you go on trips, do you forget stuff at home that you were going to take with you? You forget your contact solution? You forget your swimming suit? I think it's a trick now. I'm starting to figure this out. Because if you forget stuff at home, you get to go shopping and buy new stuff. And I'm getting smarter. How many of you forget this one? Where you put these? Oh. Nana lost her key fob. Why don't you ever look at Nana and go, oh. Ready? Say, oh. oh. If you see a key fob, it's probably hers. I can't remember where it's at. 
Moses says repeatedly throughout chapter 8, and he'll say it throughout the whole book of Deuteronomy. Remember. He says, don't forget. I say, remember. He gives us this little caveat, the very last paragraph of chapter 8. You see it? The very last paragraph. If you ever, what? If you ever forget. You know what Moses says? If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. If we ever forget, So what now, remember. I thought about putting out on my calendar on my phone every day. Because every day it gives you these little notifications, right? And if you put it on one day and then you go to those special settings and you put every day for the future of your phone, it will send you a notification at some point during the day and all you have to put on there is remember God. We must not forget. I remember this as a boy, praying this prayer. I was at a tabernacle meeting. The mosquitoes were bad. We were down by the river or at a building where the sides came up so the wind could blow through gently. And a man was preaching to us about Jesus, and my own parents had talked to me about Jesus over and over, and I prayed with them. And I remember praying this different times as a young man but going up to that altar on that night and praying the prayer. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. We're going to sing a song at the end of church today that talks about my sins are as great as the sand. Yet Jesus forgives them all. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God and I believe you have forgiven me. I believe you will give me everlasting life in heaven when I die on this earth. So Lord, come into my life and save me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I'm going to ask you to turn to number 306 in your hymnal and stand and sing with me. Number 306, stand and sing with me. Number 306.